So first of all, General, congratulations on your new role as a supply chain um, envoy. Uh, so question number one, uh, what do you believe are the, the big issues here in the shipping community uh, and the supply chain? Obviously it's a national discussion, but how do you see the issues? Yeah, well, thanks for the question. First of all, Mario, thanks for your leadership out here. It's great to be with you. It's great to see this enormous operation in action and just uh, just the sheer volume that occurs uh, just day in and day out and what, what everybody's doing out here. So, you know, it, it goes back to uh, COVID, the pandemic, enormously disruptive at every echelon in all aspects of society, right? So whether it's transportation, manufacturing, labor, and then, uh, you know, you follow that with an enormous large spike in consumer demand and then you superimpose that on top of a supply chain that is by design very expensive so it's designed to be very lean and so I think you get a sense of appreciation that it's not just something you can correct overnight right having said that I think the remarkable work that's occurred here and across the supply chain much of it led from LA Long Beach has been impressive record volumes of cargo high levels of collaboration we're starting to see some indicators of, um, you know, of, of spot rates come down just a little bit. Uh, you see the infrastructure and investment, $1.2 trillion, $17 billion in reports. Very impressive. You, you saw the work that labor did, working through a pandemic and very dangerous and risky situation. So I think there's a lot of success there to celebrate what did happen. Now, does that mean we're out of the woods and we're done? No, we, we still have a lot of work to do. I think when you talk to retailers, I think when you talk to manufacturers, I think when you talk to other, you know, um, uh, cargo owners, so to speak, uh, they know this can't be the new normal, right? There's a lot of unpredictability, unreliability in the supply chain right now. That has cascading effects well beyond the cost of a container. It's excess inventory. It's uh, the cost of holding inventory. It's excessive forecast, you know, the whole bullwhip effect that comes at the, at the back end of that. And so the idea here is really to kind of take a look at how to stabilize, uh, restore some of the reliability, consumer reliability, consumer confidence, and then continue to try to bring the cost down. And, uh, and that's the work I'm actually happy to be part of. General, you, you come to this position with a lot of experience. And first of all, thank you for your service to this country. Uh, you're not new to the logistics uh, operations. So in your view, how do you see your approach to the supply chain issues? And do you have any new approaches from uh, what we had previously? You know, John Picari served us very well uh, and did a great job in terms of really bringing collaboration. But uh, now that you're on board, uh, what approach do you have? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, John Picari, to your point, uh, in fact, I think he's an American hero. You know, the, the work he did pro bono to step in, uh, just to kind of build the level of collaboration and to, to gain the momentum that was gained. He deserved a lot of recognition. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got big shoes to fill. I keep him on speed dial. You know, he's my helpline. But uh, we want, what we want to do is build on his momentum, right? Mm -hmm. Expand the level of collaboration, enhance collaboration, um, you know, focus on some executive working groups with, uh, with industry, uh, both with ocean carriers, with rail carriers, focus some sessions with the beneficial cargo owners, and really start to focus on, uh, you know, what are those critical path congestion points that we can then try to accelerate what might be a normal market correction, but would take more time. And we know we don't have time. The American people don't have time, and they don't, you know, they want us to move quicker. And so that's the idea here, is how can we enhance collaboration, just build on what John built, and then uh, gain, you know, push, gain, build on his momentum uh, to, to, to again, knock down some of this congestion and to in introduce, restore, right, fluidity into the supply chain. General, as you've referenced, uh, the global supply chain has been in a crisis, COVID rooted, the pandemic of the century. But crisis does bring opportunities. And the great opportunity that we've seen here, uh, and we're gonna look forward to your leadership on this, is how we have a new view of operations. One of the robust discussions with regard to potential solutions, long-term, mid-term, short-term, has been a 24-7 discussion. Um, how do you see that discussion and what's your view of 24-7 operations? And I will say, again, the framework of expanding hours of operation 
at gateways like the San Peter Bay Complex, the most significant and the largest container gateway in the United States? Yeah, it's, it's a great question, and uh, you know, I get that question from a number of folks, and obviously if you expand hours, there's the opportunity to move more freight, more fluidity. So it makes, it's quite, quite reasonable. I look at it this way, I think, I, I, I call it the theory of victory. I think, uh, you know, there's, there's two aspects and they're quite simplistic. One is freight in motion should remain in motion until it hits final destination. So these terminals are not designed to be storage points or transfer points from one mode to another, as you well know. The second is that all transportation conveyances have to be in constant motion, constant cycle. And when you start to disrupt that, as we're seeing now, I mean, the, the, the good news is record volumes of cargo. The bad news is record volumes of cargo. And a lot of these folks, they don't have any place to put it, and so it ends up being stored in transit, which creates all kinds of headaches and for your terminal operators out here and, and rail inland as well. So it, it would make sense, right, to expand hours of operation if you can get that kind of approach throughout the supply chain. So if only you or only a terminal goes to 24-7, that's interesting. But if everybody, to include the warehousing community, all the other modes of transport move to 24-7, or something more than, than, than today, it seems to make logical sense that you can move much more cargo in the same period of time. And it's all about fluidity. And it's all about you know restoring consumer confidence and bringing costs down. So yes, I think there's a lot of value to that. And then the critical path analysis, uh, you know, what we want to do is, is move our way in that direction. The first, you know, we've got to start knocking down these congestion points. If we did it today, I'm not sure we get the result we wanted to, but eventually we can get to that space. Well, General, listen, thank you so much for taking the time and thank you so much for your continued service to this nation and look forward to your leadership. Well, thank you very much. Right. It's great to be here with you.